love, peace, and grace from the eternal heavenly Godhead, including the almighty, merciful, and loving God the Father, the Father of lights, the Ancient of Days, Yah, His Holy Son, Jesus Christ, or Emmanuel, or Yeshua, who is God manifested in the flesh, and the Holy Spirit of Truth, who is God living in the true follower of Christ and in whom He produces His fruits. We're living in a world that is growing darker and darker as each day goes by. It is growing darker and darker, spiritually speaking. You look at the headlines, as at the news headlines, the main news items, it's not good. There's still war in the Ukraine involving Russia. There are riots, massive riots in China. And there's a lot of instability in other parts of the world. You go in the poorer nations of the world. And people are crying out for money. They look at the government as their parent. For some of us, on an individual basis, some of us don't have a dad. Some of us have lost their dad, or they don't have an adopted dad. There's no father figure in their lives. But there's a Father who is in heaven, our Heavenly Father who is in heaven, a loving Father. And the Bible has many Bible verses that explain the love, the character, and the righteousness of God the Father. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, we read about God the Father. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth. And without iniquity, just and right is he. That's God the Father. Just and right is he. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, we read, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. God is long-suffering and of great mercy. Another word for mercy is to be compassionate, to be forgiving, to have pity. The Lord, the Father, is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression for those that love Him, as I will show you in the following verse. And by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Those who are guilty, the wicked, God will not forget you. He is just, he is merciful, but at the same time, he will punish us sometimes. He will spank us sometimes when we do something wrong. Any loving Christian father, as I do sometimes with my son Daniel, who's only but a toddler, sometimes I give him a little look, he gets the message. God is like that with us too. He's not going to give us a look, but He's warning us through His Son's holy written word, the Bible, which testifies of the Lord Jesus Christ, that by no means is He going to clear the guilty or the wicked, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. But for those who are obedient and faithful to God, God is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. Iniquity and transgression also means sin. We know that sin is the transgression of God's law. 
speaking of the law of God, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, in the midst of God's holy Ten Commandments, His Decalogue, God says, Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. God has mercy upon those that love him. How do you love him? By keeping his commandments. His holy ten commandments. And again, Exodus chapter 20 verse 6 is right in the midst of God's holy ten commandments. God will show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. God will show mercy. He will show pity. He will have compassion. And he will forgive you. This is the God that we serve. This is the Christian God of the universe that we serve. A loving Father who is there for you. If you are without a dad, a physical dad, your spiritual dad, who lives forever. And what kind of a father is God the Father? In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 13, we read, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. If you are sincere in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father will hear you. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Another word for hearken is listen. God will hear your prayers when you love him and keep his commandments. If you don't, your prayers are an abomination to God the Father. God is there for you. When you seek him and you find him, when you shall, when you shall search for him with all of your heart, just like King David, who was a man who loved God very much, even though he had his flaws. King David was loved by God the Father. In James chapter 1, verse 27, God reveals more about his character, a character of love. The verse says in James chapter 1, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. God the Father wants us to visit the fatherless. If you are fatherless, the Father is there for you. God the Father is there for you. God the Father is in heaven. I will speak more about that part later on. Again, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. If you are without a dad, let God the Father fill the void for you. You may not see him physically for now, but he is there for you. Don't feel that you're being cast out or you're being left behind. God the Father is there. The ultimate source of love, the ultimate source of power, the omnipotent, omniscient God the Father, the highest power that you can think of is God the Father. Turn to him. Turn to the Christian God of the universe, God the Father, the first person 
of the heavenly Godhead. Turn to him. And that verse, James chapter 1, verse 27, reveals a lot about his character. He encourages us to visit the fatherless, those who do not have a dad, children who have lost their dad because of war or because the dad left them. God the Father will never leave you. He will never forsake you if you turn to him, if you seek him with all of your heart. As for Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. In the first epistle written by Peter chapter 1, verse 3, in speaking of God the Father, who is full of love, who is full of mercy and compassion, and who pities his children. In speaking of God the Father, Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Jesus Christ was risen from the dead by God the Father, and he was, Christ rose from the dead after being in his tomb for three days and three nights. He rose from the dead by the grace of God the Father, by his will. Imagine what he can do with you. Christ rose from the dead by the will of God the Father. God can raise you from the dead, from a life of spiritual darkness, where you are dead spiritually, and he can make you a new creature through Jesus Christ, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit of truth. Peter again says, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, there's that word again, mercy, had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We too were once dead, spiritually speaking, by being always serving sin, and sin leads to death. We were servants of sin unto death. As for Romans chapter 6, verse 16, that when we were baptized, we came out of the water, being baptized into Christ. And when you look at Christ, when he came out of the river Jordan after his baptism, the Holy Spirit came down upon Christ as a dove. And the Father, at the same time, God the Father, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And in his transfiguration, in Christ's transfiguration, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, after Christ was transfigured, as Peter was talking, a cloud appeared and a voice came out of heaven, the voice of God the Father. He said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hearken unto him. Listen to him. The Father wants us to listen to his Son, Yeshua, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ. This is the Father that we serve, God the Father, which is in heaven. In the second epistle written by John, chapter 1, verse 3. We read, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. For all too often the world sees God as an angry God, as a vengeful God, as a God who has no mercy, as a God who is angry. But the Bible says otherwise. God is full of mercy for those that love him and keep his commandments, his holy ten commandments, which define his love. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 45 and 48, the Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yeshua, as part of his beautiful Sermon on the Mount, undoubtedly the most beautiful presentation ever given by any person on this earth who has ever lived, 
the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 45 and 48, Christ says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God is a God of justice. He is fair. He is not a respecter of persons. As Peter says in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, He maketh his son, S-U-N, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. That's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. And Christ says, he adds, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. We are to be perfect, even as our Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. We are to be perfect like God the Father. We have to remember that our Elohim, our God, the Christian God of the universe, made us in His image. We are to imitate Christ, as Christ said to Philip, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Christ was basically saying, What you see in me is a reflection of who God the Father is. Christ is full of love. Christ is God in the flesh. Christ is the image of God the Father who is in heaven. We need to remember that Christ is a reflection of God the Father. He is full of love, full of mercy and compassion. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And Christ is a reflection, is the image of God the Father. Notice that Christ also says that your Father which is in heaven. Every time, or almost every time that Christ talks about God the Father, he always mentions, or almost all the time, mentions that God the Father is in heaven. In other words, there's no God the Father or Holy Father on earth. No one in a religious context or from a religious perspective should be called Father, and especially not Holy Father. That goes against Christ's instruction in Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. So whosoever is called Father on earth, or Holy Father especially on earth, and who holds a religious position, he is a fraud and a scam artist. Christ says our Father is in heaven. There's no other Father for us to look up to but the Father who is in heaven. God the Father who is in heaven. Again, whosoever is called Father or Holy Father on earth in a religious context is a scam artist and a fraud. Do not listen to him. And I'm talking specifically about the priests and the Pope of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church. Do not listen to them. Hear what they say, especially what the Pope says. Hear what they say, but don't obey them. Obey your Father which is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 4 and 6, the Lord Jesus Christ says, That thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. God the Father sees everything. In verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Your heavenly Father sees and knows everything. He sees you when you pray in your room, or in this case, in your closet. It's another word for, for let's say, in your room. He knows your heart. We are to pray to him. God the Father is always there to help you. 
in times of need, in times of helplessness and hopelessness, God the Father is there. We're living in a very cold world, in a world that is lacking love because the world knows not God. The world has, is, is, has essentially rejected God by embracing a false God. And we're living in a world that is in a spiritual mess, in spiritual darkness. Christ is the light, and his Father, God the Father, is the Father of lights. That's in James chapter 1, verse 17. The Father that we serve is the Father of lights. There's no darkness in him. Please turn to God the Father. In John chapter 14, verse 26, we read, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Christ speaking, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's God the Father, the Father that we serve. He comes from God the Father. The another comforter will come upon you and he will live in you, the Holy Spirit of truth, the Ruach HaKadosh. And he, he will produce his fruits in you, as are mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, Verses 22 and 23. God is there at all times. He's there at all times for you. He's available to you. He's not a hidden father. He is in heaven. His dominion is in heaven. In New Jerusalem. Be there with him. Talk to him. He wants to hear from you. Whether you are looking for a dad or if you have a biological dad or an adopted dad, God the Father is there for you and for everybody. Turn to him in meekness. He is merciful, full of compassion. Please be there for him and turn to him by obeying and listening to his son, Yeshua Emmanuel who is God in the flesh. And again, Christ is a reflection of God the Father. Again, as he said to Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Christ is a reflection, is the image of the character, of the love of God the Father, who is supreme in all things. In John chapter 17, verse 11, Christ says in his beautiful prayer to God the Father, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, these being Christ's disciples, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Holy Father. This is the only time in the Bible where the term Holy Father is. And Christ was talking to his Father and our Father, God the Father, in prayer. Talking to God the Father is prayer. Praying to God the Father is when you simply talk to him. Share with him your thoughts, your feelings, your worries. He will be merciful unto you if you love him and keep his commandments. If you hear not his law, then your prayer shall be an abomination to God the Father. As per Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. It is therefore critically important to make sure that you keep the holy ten commandments of God, which come from God and which represent love and truth, because God is love and truth. Turn to your Holy Father, especially in these end times, in these critical end times, where the world is turning upside down. 
again, with all these riots in China, asking for the resignation of their president, Xi Jinping, and for the takedown of the Communist Party, the Communist government of that country. There's people living dirt poor more than ever before, ever since COVID-19. People living in dirt poor conditions and they're seeking for money. Seek God the Father first and he will hear your prayers. Seek him first and he will be merciful unto you. Come to him. Repent of your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, unrighte all unrighteousness, from all sins, from all transgressions and offenses. That's God the Father that we worship, that we should pray to. I invite you to all those who are fatherless to please come to God the Father. Let him be your dad. Let him be your dad. And to those who do have a biological dad or a dad who has adopted you, still pray to God the Father, your heavenly Father, the everlasting Father, the everlasting Elohim, the everlasting Ancient of Days, the everlasting Yah. He lives forever. He's eternal life. He's omnipotent, omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. And he's willing to extend his hand to reach out to you. Reach out to God the Father. He's there for you. Don't feel hopeless. Don't feel alone. God the Father is there for you. Seek him with all of your heart. As for Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. May the love, peace, and grace of the Almighty God, God the Father, and His Holy Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit of Truth, be with you in these troubling end times. So be it. Amen.